Hello, today is February 15th, 2020, and the time is 2.14 p.m. I just wanted to do a real quick video about an article uh, that I read about uh, a doctor who was apparently falsely accused, committed suicide uh, before he learned that he was already cleared from it. Now, where this hits home for me is uh, some people have suggested that my worrying about the false accusation by the female in December of 2012 was, um, I don't know, uh, excessive or, or something, whatever. Yeah, I'm basically worried about nothing. The point is, though, uh, this article shows an extreme example of how a man had taken it very seriously, like I did, but took a permanent solution uh, for dealing with it. And it's sad, it's very sad that this individual had taken their own life because of a false accusation. And I guess the irony of this whole thing is how he was already cleared, but because of uh, policy of the police or some procedural thing, uh, he, they couldn't tell him uh, that he was already cleared and because of the way the world is today with the believe me and me too movements and all this other nonsense and the way feminism has vilified men he thought that this was his solution it's sad it's really really sad so what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the article and uh, then I'm going to just give some uh, final commentary to it so this is from the DailyMail.com news. Retired doctor, 76, accused of an historical allegation, killed himself 24 hours after the case was dropped, but police didn't tell him he was in the clear. And this was uh, uploaded on February 13, 2020. And there's a picture of, uh, of the man here. Dr. Peter Betts became troubled people would hear about unproven allegations. Official guidelines meant police couldn't immediately inform Dr. Betts. If you have been affected by any of our issues raised in this article, you can call the Samaritan's 24-hour helpline and they give the phone number. A retired doctor accused of historic allegations was not told the police investigation has been dropped and committed suicide 24 hours later. An inquest heard. Peter Betts suffered severe anxiety during the investigation and became so troubled people would hear about the unproven allegations he took his own life. The 76-year-old respected pediatrician was found in the garden of his village home with stab wounds to his chest and heart. An inquest heard 24 hours before Dr. Betts' death, police dropped the investigation but could not inform him for a week due to official process guidelines. So a few uh, troubling things right off the top with that is um, that he apparently, according to official reports, is he stabbed himself in the chest to death, which is unusual. Um, I, I'm not going to get into any conspiratorial ideas here, but if that's what happened, I mean, the, the effects that the allegation had on him, can't even imagine to... to, for, to for him to take his own life that way. The other part I would like to address here is, again, we're dealing with police and nonsensical procedural stuff. The same type of thing had happened to me in, in a sense where in December of 2012, the female told me herself about this allegation and whatever else. And the police never spoke to me that day, for whatever reason. Now, I'm going to assume now that there was some procedural thing or whatever. But it, it, looking back at some text messages I had with the new executive director and myself that day, he, he was told to hold off on uh, about it until the next day for some reason. But the female had already told me on her own. And then I guess she got all worried because I got upset so she went back saying that I forced her to tell her 
which is ridiculous because I had no idea what was going on. I just knew the police were there, they spoke to her, and I thought it was something to do with an accident that happened, was it a, a year prior to that? So I had no idea what was going on. So it is, there seems to be an issue with the policy that police have. At the hearing, the doctor's family revealed how his mental health deteriorated rapidly during the month-long investigation into unnamed allegations. Dr. Betts was found dead in the garden of his home in a quiet Campton near Winchester, Hans, on October 14th last year, having been interviewed a month before in September. His son, Dr. Timothy Betts, said, Retired for 14 years, he was an extremely well-respected pediatrician and a great father. We tried to tell him that he shouldn't be worried about the allegation, but he got more and more stressed. It was against his entire nature and career, and the whole allegation process was a horror for him. Now, I completely understand how this doctor was feeling at the time. His, apparently, his investigation had lasted a month. Mine, I had no idea what was going on. And, and after I found out and everything else, and even talking to the new executive director at the time, uh, saying that, you know, there was nothing to I was still getting conflicting stories, even from him, that it's not over and everything else. So I don't know if, it, if there was an investigation, how long it lasted. Well, I knew there was an investigation, but how long it lasted. So from my perspective, this was lasting from December of 2012 right through to May of 2013. And then there was another, what, three months, January, June, July, August. So yeah, another three months of investigation, and which was just impacting on my mental state and I was becoming more stressed. I had no idea what was going on, what would be made up, who would be believed or anything. And the fact that they had all my stuff with all the auto recordings and everything else on it that I was redoing to vindicate myself, what if it got lost or, or they destroyed it or whatever. And some of the, some of the stuff uh, after I received it from the police I, I couldn't access it on my hard drive, so I was panicking, and then everything just seemed to escalate from there. So I understand where this doctor was coming from. His worry was that, although he hadn't done anything wrong, the accusation would get out on social media and in the press. In the end, he wasn't himself, and his thinking went from rational to irrational. Detective Sergeant Andrew Hawkins, who worked on the investigation, said the decision not to inform Dr. Betts of the decision was due to official process guidelines. General Practitioner Dr. Mark Roberts said that Dr. Betts had been contemplating suicide in the days before his death. He added, he told me that he felt like a metal coil that could go ping at any time. Senior Coroner Christopher Watkinson concluded his death by suicide said Dr. Betts was not informed as the force was in the process of informing the complainant that the case had been dropped. The decision was made October 13th, a day before Dr. Betts' death. An inquest heard 24 hours before Dr. Betts' death, police dropped the investigation but could not inform him for a week due to official process guidelines. A spokesman said, We investigated Dr. Betts about a non- recent allegation and the outcome was to take no further action against him. This decision took place shortly before his death and the complainant was in the process of being informed. Now one of the things that bothered me during the um, December 2012 investigation, whatever was going on, was other people knew about this in, in the, the organization where I was working. And I didn't. I had no idea what was going on. So th that there was that embarrassment that was there. And I mean, it, there was a lot of emotional impact that this had on me at the time. Um, now, if the female never told me and why she told me, I, I have no idea. But she, she told me on her own. And 
I mean, would have I reacted the same if I would have learned it the next day as allegedly planned? I don't know, but it, there was a lot of hurt, embarrassment for, you can be embarrassed for something you didn't do just on the allegation as this doctor was. So there was nothing uh, that I did that other people taking it seriously and and it impacting them. There was nothing abnormal about how I handled it and how I reacted. So the rest of the article simply talks about his career and things that he was, he's accomplished and how he will be remembered and everything else. And uh, I mean, m my heart goes out to this, uh, to this man, especially his family. So with my case, because two now former officers decide to do street justice on behalf of the female without knowing all the facts uh, and the damage they did to me physically and as well as emotionally uh, I never had the opportunity to be even cleared of their false allegations so for me there was really no I never received the closure that I was really looking for and my last effort with the lawsuit was to do that but that all fell apart because it's more important to spend a whole pile of taxpayers money than to simply say hey we messed up you know let's just make this all go away no one's in trouble and just you know whatever but whatever I, I talk about this in other videos so I guess my 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 point that I would like to make with all this is how men have, how different men deal with these kind of situations differently. Now, he took it, he took that situation and harmed himself. I, on the other hand, uh, decided to uh, face it and find out what was going on to vindicate myself and push through. I could have at that time taken the same attitude he did. However, the problem is uh, none of this would have gotten exposed. And I, 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 I did get some sort of uh, vindication, but not, as I said, to what I wanted. So because the first former officer brought the false allegations about the female and other false allegations that they created into the trial he cemented all all that falsehood the, all those false narratives into my case and things just kept escalating from there and then everyone's trying to cover each other's butts and everything else and in the end I'm the one that's uh, carrying the burden of everything of everyone else's uh, allegations and everything else so that's really what I wanted to talk about was about this doctor who took an extreme uh, he handled it to an ex one ex type of extreme whereas some people have said that I handled my situation to another type of extreme how many men out there and there's there's countless who have taken their own lives over allegations or have caused themselves some sort of harm or uh, got into drugs or alcohol or just had a low self-esteem and had a downward spiral in life and, and losing careers or whatever. I mean, false allegations has a ripple effect. It not only impacts the individual, but it impacts a lot of other people and things in society so that's something we have to consider if we're going to salvage anything in society so anyway that's uh, what I want to talk about thank you for watching please like subscribe comment and share